while Deadline was at the Vintage Computer Festival Midwest, he got so much amazing footage of all the really cool stuff that was there. So now it's time to roll that beautiful festival footage. Hello, Deadline here. I am uh, just getting back from the VCF Midwest trip and boy let me tell you that is a life-changing experience and if you haven't gone you should get out there especially if you like any kind of vintage computer stuff or as the younger kids say retro so let's just uh, see what we got the first thing is uh, this awesome vintage computer festival Midwest t-shirt and uh, let's see what's on the back Okay, it's good in frame and everything. Yes. Cool. Alright. All right. So if I was in the frame, then that's okay. Part. You're helping me. Okay. I'm gonna cut this. And uh, so, yeah, that's the t shirt that I got. We're gonna do a new segment on our channel. It's called the Check Out My Trapper Keeper Yo. Look at it. Awesome. And so, it's got all kinds of cool 80s designs on it and stuff. And this was made by Mead. Well, apparently they're making these again, and you can get them. And so I got mine, and it looks freaking cool, right? So let's go ahead and see what's in the Trapper Keeper. What? Okay, awesome. I got some goodies in here to show you. <clears throat> First thing is the obvious. Um, Vintage Computer Festival Midwest badge, but I've also got the exhibitor tag that goes with it because we took our table out there. All right, so I'm going to show that here. So that was pretty cool. Now I got a couple of these stickers from uh, the desk. They weren't free, but you know, I figured, hey, we're gonna get this sticker wall started at some point, and this will be a pretty cool thing to put on there. It looks pretty cool, huh? I got two, one's for me, one's for Zamfir. And then, uh, let's see what else. This is some schematics that I'm working on. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to show you is this uh, VIC-20 Quick Reference Handbook. And it's edited by Jeffrey Daniels, and I'm gonna show you this guy and his software in just a minute but just look it's got it's an illustrated guide on how to program the VIC-20 it's got everything you need to know yeah look at how illustrated it is it's just an awesome book that you can get and he was selling them there and I was like after he showed me his software that he created. Yeah, just go for it again. Check out this game. This is made by uh, Jeffrey Daniels. It's so awesome. It's a meme game. Steam games. <laughs> so yeah, check it out. Yeah, bring it in. Yeah, bring it in. Yeah, you know. This is the kind of software you're making with this, then I want to know how to do it, right? And your methods. So if you want to program VIC-20, I highly recommend looking at this, uh, looking up Jeffrey Daniels, and I'm gonna try to put some information up here and in the description, and on the back it's got like all the color code combinations you'd need. It's just a beautifully crafted book. 
I'm not going to go through the details, but I can tell you there's some good stuff in there. Okay, and then so sitting to my right at the table sections was the Mega 65 guys. And uh, they gave me this cool mouse pad. And it has all the different op codes on it. And it's broken out. Um, I'm not sure what the color codes. Okay, here it is. So the yellow, the yellow codes are for 6502, right? And then the blue is for 6510 instructions. And then of course, hold on, let me get my old man reading glasses. And I can tell you, I've learned that I need to read, read the glasses, read with glasses. Oh, no, no, okay. So that was not 6510, it's 4510 and the 45 GS02 instructions. So I thought this was cool because if I need to look up something while I'm programming, all I gotta do is lift up my mouse and take a look, right? So that's pretty cool. And so there's some concept art and stuff I'm gonna skip over that so one thing happened to us while we was at the vintage computer festival Midwest I had stepped away from the table and someone had brought this cassette and placed it on top of the c64 and uh, yeah it's meatloaf bat out of hell and look at it it's just awesome so if anybody knows who did this please let me know in the comments and uh, if you want it back let me know too I just took it for safekeeping since no one came back to claim it otherwise it's gonna be here in safe hands Stella Nova here and Deadline told me the story about how someone left a meatloaf cassette at the table and I am a big fan so we are about to put the tape in our handy dandy retro uh, 7-in-1 system here and see if it still works and I'm super excited because I really like meatloaf. <laughs> okay. All right let's give it a try. You ready? I am ready. Okay. Well, it works, but I'm blocking it out so that YouTube won't jack with this video. If you're wondering why we got this meatloaf cassette, go check out our meatloaf video. Uh, one of the highlights of the show was um, the Stop Bits, which is the band uh, Taylor and Amy. Um, Action Retro and Veronica Explains, they got up on stage, they had guitars, basses, drums, and they also had a synth cart. This is a uh, Commodore 64 instrument, right? They turned the Commodore 64 into an instrument and was playing all that on, on the stage. At first I thought, well, this is going to be interesting, and, but the thing is, it turned out really well and I was pleasantly surprised by the great music that they created. So my favorite thing that they did was the VCF song. It was pretty awesome. So one of the things that they were asking the audience to do is to not record and not put out any of the footage or the music. So we're gonna respect that and not do any of that. But I will show you one thing that they told us is they have this website that they made stopbits.net and if you go there and you'll see that it looks like one of them old like web pages from the 90s where you, it looks like GeoCities or something like that so go check them out it's pretty cool and of course you could probably go to any one of their channels I don't know I haven't checked it out yet to see the actual music that they put out but they everybody did a uh, standing ovation at the end and they were like encore encore and uh, so they did a impromptu version of their 6502 song, which was cool. 
Let's see, what else we got? We got the Retro Bits came by our table and we got to meet him and I went over and talked to him about his display and uh, then he came over and played our wackadoodle game and it was pretty cool getting to know him since we've been following each other on uh, the socials and so that's his information on this card that I got from him and I do have a sticker around here from his table I don't know where it's at right now it's probably in the pile but I'll be getting to it okay and so this is um, add water and stir retro computer kits and they had their Altair replicas set up and they were just all blinking all over the place and it was pretty cool so these are what Altair 8800 yeah. fake are they fake yeah they're they're, they're emulators it's, yeah. it's uh, run or let me show you it's run on a, an Arduino 2 right there yeah uh, that emulates the 8080 processor and everything else right. um, and then these in the in the full size Altair case uh, I haven't quite determined the price, but they will be between 450 to 500 in, in kit form. Uh, and I'm waiting on the manufacturer. Uh, he should be getting the cases to me in early October. Is this your car? Yes. Alright, we'll take the car the wrong house and make sure our audience. Okay. These look cool. Yeah, I, I'm really excited about the cases. I, I've been selling them with an acrylic case for about six years and I'm really excited to, to put them in a, in a genuine metal case that looks like an original Altair. I met the guys from Texelac and uh, I asked them do you have a mini pet keyboard kit with them they didn't have it I was gonna about to drop some dough on it right there at the spot if they had one but they did not unfortunately uh, but they gave me this card and said you can go to our website and get the mini pet kit, uh, keyboard kit, or whatever. So that's pretty cool. Met those guys. And then uh, we have the stickers from Macintosh Librarian. Met her. She was pretty cool. Um, we had a little bit of a chat because, you know, she does her little Mackie character. And, uh,. I think her um, whole deal with her like public librarian taking it back to the old school PBS kind of stuff is pretty cool. Teaching people about the Macs. So that was cool. And then this guy comes up to our table. Um, the Break Key. He's on YouTube. So go check him out. He does some uh, vintage computer stuff. Uh, then I was, uh, the Wisconsin Computer Club came over to our table and they were talking to me and they, they gave me this card and they wanted me to join the club so I'm going to go check out their club, Wisconsin Computer Club so if you're looking for more resources for the old computers, well here it is that's your information I'll link all this stuff in the description Oh, here's the sticker for Retro Bits. All right, I better put that with the card. Boom, Retro Bits. Got your card and your sticker. All right, what else do we got? Oh, here's a um, the Mega 65 business cards from my neighbor on the right. Right, Mega 65. They got the website information. Oh, come on. This thing doesn't get in focus very well. But I'll link all that in the description so you can get a better look. So that's a pretty cool looking business card. They got a photo of the Mega 65 on the front. Your information on the back. <clears throat> and to my left, I was sitting right next to the legendary Nibbles and Bites. I got to speak with her and shake her hand and everything. And this is her business card and on the back she's written a program that you can type in and run on your Commodore machines. She did say that there may be a bug in it. 
but she's got a revision fix on her website and which is you can find that here nibblesandbites.net so go check her out that's pretty awesome and uh, you know another thing about nibbles and bites is she's one of the reasons why we started doing our content in the first place she inspired us so much that we got involved and I thought it was pretty cool that we got to sit next to her at the show and then there's uh so okay this guy Steve the vent nerd he comes by our table and uh, he's talking he's uh, asking us to come to vintage computer SoCal right which is in February 15th to the 16th and it's somewhere in Southern California um, all the information I guess can be looked up at vcfsocal.com and uh, up oh, there it is it's in Orange California right so we got Atari Texas Instruments IBM Apple Tandy computers Radio Shack Commodore and more so if your favorite retro computer isn't shown on this list well, technically it is, because look, and more. All right, so I'll have that in the description as well. So thanks, Steve, for stopping by and checking us out. All right, what do we got next? We got the, the American Retro Group, no, the American Retro Shop. Now he had a, a little display of his retro chip testers and uh, I don't know how many exactly but you can plug in any chip in here from any of the old vintage computers or as the young kids say retro right and actually I guess I should be calling it retro because look it says retro chip tester um, what else can I tell you you can you can just plug your chip in there right and then it will tell you what it is and what is good or bad about it right if it's a good chip or a bad chip or what have you so that was pretty cool oh yeah and the mega 65 guys so Jim 64 I got to meet him and shake his hand he's a, a subscriber on our channel and uh, we caught he's been in the comments before and I uh, got to meet him and here's a picture of him right and that was so cool getting to know him and he gave me this uh, basic Star Galactica game for the Mega 65 which he wrote and just popped the disc in load it up and uh, actually tried it out and it's a pretty fun game I actually want to describe it as something like Star Control and it was done in basic and he showed me the listing and everything and it's all he even did the sprites and everything with basic listing data lines right so that's pretty cool we're gonna have to check that out we might just do a whole video on that so another thing that we got was this it's a volume three of the pc demos two 2003 through 2010 it's called mind candy and it's a DVD and uh, let's see what's got on here it's PC demo scene journeys from all, all these different demo sceners that made uh, the demos right so that's gonna be cool to watch oh it's on blu-ray I guess I should have guessed that since it's in a blue case yeah blu-ray disc so I'm kind of looking forward to watching that. That's pretty cool. Uh, the next thing we got is a little bit of a, a pamphlet. We met this guy. I'm going to find out his name and we'll post his information up here. But he was telling me about the RCA microprocessor, the CDP-1802, which I had no idea even existed. Apparently it was a, a competitor for the 6502 and uh, the only thing is this, the MOS got to the market first with the 6502 and uh, I wonder 
how much history would be different if this one came out first, right? I know nothing about the inner workings of this processor, but I've got a couple of pamphlets here. And uh, I guess you can go look it up on the internets. The RSA, RCA Cosmac 1802 microprocessor. Uh, Joseph Weisbecker, right? So there's some more. Uh, and I got some more information. It was in Popular Electronics from August of 1976. And there's a little bit of schematics in here and some bus information and things like that. It's very interesting to see. Right? So there you go. That's the RCA Cosmax 1802 microprocessor. Okay, so the the guys from the third annual Indie Classic Computer and Video Game Expo came around to our table. They gave me this out. It's in Indianapolis, Indiana, April 12th through 13th, 2025, IndieClassic.org. I guess they asking us to come up there. I don't know if we're going to be able to make it to that one. We're kind of getting a little strapped with our money situation, even though... You know, we use some of our Patreon money to be able to get to Midwest this year. It's kind of set us back a little bit. Um, okay, and so one of the final things I want to show you here is this book. Um, and this is a book written by David Yude. And he comes up to me and he's... Uh, looking at my table and he meets me and I thought it was cool because he's checking out our stuff and genuinely interested in you know what we're doing and he's like come over here I want to I want to give you something he says I want to give you this book um, after he found out that I was a programmer for the Commodore and it's uh, called EOR hashtag, hashtag dollar sign FF uh, 6502 ponderables and befuddlements and that right there uh, kind of gives you an idea of what this is and the best way I can explain it it seems like it is a puzzle book kind of like a crossword kind of thing for programmers right and so what I really love about this book is that he's got a little preface in here and it says, draw your circle big, draw your circle wide, draw it so everyone can find a place inside. Open up your heart, that's where you begin to draw a love circle wide enough to circle others in, right? And it's uh, from a, a song from Circle Sam and Other Tales 2017 by Jack Pearson, 1953 to 2017, Wandering Mistral and Friend. So that's pretty awesome, right? There's a little preface behind this. But uh, this is it, this is how it works. It g he gives you category 6502, dollar sign zero zero. And then it gives you two things, EOR, hashtag value one, branch if equal to PT1. And then, so it comes in little chunks and you gotta figure out what's going on, right? And then there's answers in the back to everything, but I'm not gonna look at that myself at all. I wanna do this by hand just sitting here and writing it out. So thanks, David. That was a really awesome gift. And I really appreciate it. And um, I just wanted to mention one other thing real quick. And that is, I was, uh, I don't want to give everything away, but I would just tell you this. This guy right here, uh, Factor of Matt, is the... I met this guy, his name is Matthew Desmond, and if you're not familiar, he uh, 
did the DesTerm program and other software and he's pretty much a legend in the Commodore community and I shook his hand we got to talking he says he's gonna be back trying to get back into the scene a little bit after a hiatus and he's got some information about his websites so Matt at factorofmatt.com www.factorofmatt.com and Instagram at Factor of Matt. Go check them out. And that's about a wrap up for the Trapper Keeper for now. Let's close it up. Then we'll get back to it later. But let's go ahead and check out some of the other footage that we got from VCF Midwest. Take it away. So I'm walking up over to the Renaissance Hotel back over there. It's across the way. But I just wanted to show everybody this because it's a cool statue. Or statues, right? This is like a veterinarian's hospital. They, you know, work on animals and stuff. And they got this really cool bronze statue out here of a guy saving a cat so yeah that's pretty cool let's see who it is team effort it's team effort yo speaking of team efforts check out the FujiNet team hard at work trying to get our vintage computers on the internet Alright, here we go. Same old, same old Where's the menu? Alright, you ready? Yeah. Let's try it. And it failed. Beep, boop, beep, boop. We got the tech guy up here. Found him. I'm just walking through the hall here. A lot of Commodores stuff. A lot of old cameras, it looks like. Got June over there, right next to our table. We got uh, all kinds of stuff going on over here for sale. Planetfall, man. Oh, and a copy of Archive. One hundred dollars, though. Oh my god, that is immaculate condition. Can. Excuse me. Some robots. A Heath Zenith robot. That's pretty cool. Carts for sale. These are interesting looking machines. APF Imagination Machine 2. I don't think I've ever seen that. Got some uh, guys over here. It's like Commander. This must be David Murray's table with his Commander X16, his t shirts, and things like that. And looks like we got Richard Bits here. And he's not here right now. And Adrian is not here right now. Dead parts still in their tips. That's pretty cool.
Well, that's a cool looking building. Zurich says. Go. Check it out. I run the strobe light program on this CBM SX64 Ultimax by Eric. And it's awesome. So check it out. Come on. Right? Now you gotta have some music though. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's cool. So just a couple of pictures before I finally wrap this up. Me standing out on the grass grounding myself. Me and Jamie in the lobby, and I'm forcing him to make meatloafs. Jamie and Dan, down, we rode up from Atlanta together. Studio Ghibli anime from Retro Bits' table. Finally able to get over and meet Robin, and that was pretty cool. So I met the guys from the 8-Bit Shack table. So I'm going to be trying to port one of their Apple games over to the Commodore. It's called Undead, so be watching this space. Whoa, look at me on the camera. That's awesome. Video Onyx. Video Title Maker 2000. Man, I want one of those now. Hey, hey Jessica. Jessica. We, uh, I got your game. Check it out. I'm super excited to play it. I wasn't able to attend the festival this year. He came home and told me that one of number one, he was your neighbor, and number two, you had a really cool game that he played while he was there. So I wanted to try it out. And here we go. Let's All try right. it out. Yes. I did poorly. Oh. It's really hard around those corners. <laughs> it really is. I want to get that player three. Oh man. I should have went up when you went down. Oh. Mm. Okay. It's quite challenging. It is very challenging. Okay. Oh, not, oh. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Jessica. That was fun. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of our new programming series. And be sure to check out all the other vintage computer related videos on our channel. Right here on City's End. Play for my City's End for a different